back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thanks so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to share with you an article from Inc.com, which I'm going to link to in the description below. So you're very welcome to read this article. I'm going to read bits of it to you now. I just wanted to share it because it got me thinking about astrology and the work that I do every day. And I'll take you through. How about I take you through? So it all started with the headline of this article. And the headline is, so you're smart but not rich. This eye-opening new scientific study tells you why. And in the subhead it says, could there be a reason? Yes, it seems there could, so the article says. So I thought, wow, this is an interesting article. It came up on my phone. This was a few mornings ago. I was on my way somewhere and I was just reading through these articles. And I thought, oh, let's have a look at this. This seems really interesting. And I read about this study, which in the article it says is entitled Talent versus Luck, the Role of Randomness in Success and Failure. And apparently it looked at people over a 40-year period. So this is quite an impressive study. Uh, it's run by a guy called Alessandro Pluccino of the University of Catania in Italy. And it says that he and his colleagues created a computer model of talent. And when I read that, I thought, oh, that's incredible because I have a computer model of talent on my MacBook right now. You know, I use Parashara's Light software, which is Vedic sidereal astrology software. And I plug people's birth details in and I get to read their talents and their strengths and I get to see what they're good at. I get to see what it is that they'll most likely do as a profession. Uh, you know, so definitely when it comes to a computer model of talent, I found this article fascinating because I thought, well, yeah, I'm, I use a computer model myself every day. Uh, it says here that Pluccino and friends mapped such apparent basics as intelligence, skill and ability in various fields. Again, the Vedic astrology software tells me about these things as well. Um, you know, and of course the Vedic astrology software can tell me a lot more. It can tell me about your personality. It can tell me how you're going to be in relationships. It tells me, uh, about, you know, big cycles of time. You know, I can easily see a 20 year cycle in time in operation. I can easily drill down and have a look at what transits are affecting you that very day. You know, so it's pretty amazing. Uh, that another group of people would go to the trouble of creating their own model from scratch to take a look at, um, you know, talent and intelligence and skill. I think that's brilliant. It says here that they then looked at people over a 40-year period, discern what sort of things had happened to them. Again, I can have a look at that too. I can have a look at past karma. I can have a look at past life karma as well. So Vedic astrology is a very powerful system, as we see. It says um, it discerned what sort of things had happened to them and compared that with how wealthy they had become. Okay, wealth, again, that's something I can look up. I can look at Raj yogas. I can see Dhan yogas forming in the sky. Uh, we can look at the quality of certain houses and certain signs and figure out, you know, in terms of wealth how that's going to play out for you. Regardless of what a computer tells me, I always think you can go beyond whatever the computer says, no matter which model it is. So whether it's the model that's being discussed in this Inc.com magazine or whether it's my astrology software or whether it's Western astrology software or whatever software it is. If it's a model, it's a model. You know, I, I always think we can go beyond these things. But let's just stick with this article. So it says here that they discovered that the conventional distribution of wealth, 20% of humanity enjoys 80% of the wealth, held true. I do agree with that. I've seen loads of charts. Uh, I've done a lot of study on all this kind of thing. I've also looked at those theories where they say that, you know, 1% of the population holds 99% of the wealth. I'm not so sold on that concept. I am interested in the concept, though, um, and the theories around 1% of the world controlling 99% of the world. That sounds 
like it has merit to me. Uh, and I love looking into those theories. I, I find them fascinating. But this Pareto principle happening here, 20% of humanity enjoying 80% of the wealth, sounds just about right. It says here, but then the team offered painful words. They still hurt even though we know they're true. And in inverted commas, it says the maxim, maximum success never coincides with the maximum talent and vice versa. So what is it that makes the difference? I hear you say, it says in the article. Are you ready for this? And in quote marks, it says, our simulation clearly shows that such a factor is just pure luck, say the researchers. And I'm like, pure luck? Come on. It's not pure luck. I've got a system that tells me a lot of information. It's not going to tell me that it's pure luck. It's going to tell me, well, they've got an amazing 11th house. Or it's going to tell me that, you know, they've got this Raj Yoga forming or they've got this wonderful thing happening or they've got, you know, I get information. I get answers. I get reasons. And this article just kind of struck me that... Um, how powerful a system Vedic astrology truly is. I mean, this is a 40-year study. Vedic astrology is, is thousands of years old. And to this day, I think we don't even know how old uh, Vedic astrology truly is. I would say thousands of years. But I mean, from what I know, it was a living body of wisdom. It was alive. You know, that's how it was taught. It was taught from teacher to student, and the knowledge was alive. It was told through kind of poetry, uh, and, and people had to memorize lots of things. And to write things down was secondary. To have things written down, to have books and that kind of thing was a secondary thing. But to have it taught to you by a guru, to, to get the fresh, divine, living wisdom, that was an honor. You know, that was really, really special. And this was a living being, a living body of wisdom. How beautiful is that? You know, there was kind of, you know, to write things down. I, I, I imagine they weren't, uh, they weren't too keen on writing things down. Of course, they didn't have computers in the way we have computers today. But, I mean, you know, and I, I really don't know. When you, when you start investigating, um, you know, books and lectures by a guy called Graham Hancock or you start getting into the stuff by John Anthony West I am yet to read I want to read there's a book he's got that I really want to read by John Anthony West but these guys have been looking back at history and seeing okay how old is this stuff really and you know it's debatable we don't 100% know uh, exactly how old these things are I, I tend to think Maybe they had better technology than, than we did even, possibly. I have no idea. But what I do know is that when I see an article like this saying that there's a computer model for talent and that it's over a 40-year period and they've done a scientific study and says this eye-opening new scientific study tells you why, tells you why you're smart but you're not rich, and then it gives us the answer as being luck. I don't know. I, for me, that's, that's not an answer enough. You know what I mean? It's not enough. You can't just say the word luck. And then, and then what? That's going to diminish my curiosity or that's going to, that's going to satisfy my inquiring mind? It's not. It's not going to. And that's where something like Vedic astrology will satisfy my curiosity and it does it does satisfy my wandering mind i'll give you an example of this and i'm going to draw a diagram i am a fan of many of these young vloggers i think what they do is absolutely amazing right these young kids some of them are earning let me tell you they are earning something like you know, a wealthy person's yearly salary per month, right? Just by making their videos on YouTube. They've got huge followings of millions and millions of people and, you know, they put up a video and boom, straight away in two hours it gets like 200,000 views and they're 
earning a profession through this wonderful platform that is YouTube, I think it's sensational. I love this. I love this. I think it's fantastic. One of these lovely young people, and I'm not going to name names because this person is very much in the public domain and I've made it a bit of a thing that if a person is still around, then I'm not going to name their name, but I think anonymously I can talk about just the 11th house. I'm just going to talk about one house and, and I'm not going to name names. I have shown charts of people on this channel before, but they have uh, crossed over and I, I think that's okay to do. I, I don't think that's, that's too bad. But this lovely young vlogger who is outstanding, who I watch and I am a subscriber to this person, I think what they do is fantastic. This person has Venus, Rahu, which Venus, Rahu, I mean, that's a money combination right there. You want to have those two together. If you want some money coming in, I'll tell you what, get those two in the same spot. So when I saw, so I've, we've got, now my pen is not very refined. I apologize about this, but we've got Venus, Rahu, we've got Mars and we've got Saturn. These are all beautifully placed. If I have a look at how they are placed, they're all happy, you know. They are all, yep, own exalted. And we've got, yeah, no, absolutely. They're very, very happy there. And we've got Ketu here. Now, when I saw this 11th house of games, and they're easy gains. This is not, this is easy money. And it is easy money because when you watch those videos, it's just joy and fun. And here's what I ate for breakfast this morning. And look at my cool outfit. And oh, I bought a new car. And you know, it's all that kind of thing going on. It's just easy, right? And it's just chucking a video on every day. And it's just, wow, okay. So, but it's this 11th house. Now, when I saw this, I kind of went, oh, wow, how incredible. And you know what it does to know this? It relaxes you because it shows you that people, people largely just follow a pathway in life. You know what I mean? And the ancients believe that to get a chart like this, you've, you've done a lot. You've gone through a lot of other experiences. You've gone through a lot of other lifetimes. And in this lifetime, these people are cashing in. You know what I mean? They've got these beautifully placed planets. They've got this easy path in life. It's all working out. Those people are probably not going to want to consult an astrologer. It, uh, maybe out of curiosity, maybe out of interest. And in fact, this particular person that I am referring to uh, did actually consult a psychic. And uh, well, this is how her birth time is known, actually. It is kind of public domain information now. But yeah, I mean, this is just really interesting because there's a reason. Okay, not just one reason, there's several reasons. There's four planets, there's a whole setup, there's a whole story in place. There's, you know, a pathway that's being followed and there's a reason. It's not luck, it's not one word called luck. There's an entire map that's showing this is why this person's life is the way that it is. And that's relaxing. That's relaxing because it kind of takes the pressure off you. And you don't have to beat yourself up and think, wow, I'm so much more older than this person and how come I'm not, you know, and that's the thing. This is what people fall into. How come I'm not smart enough or what did I do wrong or we blame ourselves, you know, so you're smart but you're not rich. This study tells you why. Well, smart and rich don't necessarily have anything to do with each other, you know, and we mustn't ever beat ourselves up or look at someone else and go oh why aren't I doing as well or and I don't do that I've done far too much self-development work and work on myself and you know on my state of being to do that kind of thing but people around me do people around me you know 
when I talk about some of these young bloggers and say, oh, this is what they're earning, this is what they're doing, and I can see it rile people, I can see it annoy people, they kind of get a bit like, oh, you know, it's just silly what they do and why is it that they're earning so much? Well, I can tell you one thing, it's not luck, you know, it's, it's, I can see it in the charts and that's what I love about this system, that it gives me answers, you know, it gives me a map and what I love as well is that I get to look at my map and I get to see, okay, so that's that person's map, but oh, this is mine. And wow, mine's very different. Oh, but mine is similar. Oh, that's why I share this in common with that person. Oh, but this is why I'm actually doing this. Oh, that's why I moved to the other side of the world. Oh, that's why I'm attracted to these kind of people. You know, it's, it's written. There's a lot that's written. It's quite incredible. And yeah, I mean, I just wanted to share this article with you so that, I mean, it's something interesting to read. Uh, you know, I'm often coming across cool articles, so I just thought I'd share the article with you. And at the same time, I just thought I'd share my thinking and share the fact that while this system and this study says it's down to luck, uh, I know of a system that I believe is scientific some people might disagree with that. You're very welcome to disagree. <laughs> I don't mind. But uh, my system gives me answers every single day. And it, and it gives me answers to the puzzles of why is it that, you know, some, some young 20-something can be earning squillions per month uh, from doing, you know, easy work, I guess you could say. You could call it easy work. I actually, I, I don't call it easy work. I do look at their lives and I, I appreciate them. You know, they're managing big things, you know, they're buying properties and managing contracts and running businesses and, you know, but I imagine that the setup of their chart is definitely giving them green lights and it's giving them an easy run and, you know, it's giving them an easier time. And there are charts where there are Saturnian delays, there are charts where there's Mars in the way, there are charts where it's difficult to get sleep, it's difficult to think straight, it's difficult, you know, there are difficulties, you can see those. Um, but again, you know, I, I don't want to use astrology as a language to be negative either. And there's quite a balance, which I might go into in other videos at a later time. But this one I just really wanted to explore uh, this topic which I thought was kind of cute so you're smart but you're not rich you know have a look at this study and I thought well have a look at Vedic astrology we can give you a lot of answers you know you could 40 years you could work and, and create a study like this or you could spend a year or two with a Vedic astrologer and you could analyze loads of data and you could come up with uh, some pretty good reasons so that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're curious about what's in your map of stars, well, you're very welcome to work with me or you can do self-study as well, which I highly recommend. There are many uh, free websites where you can plug in your details and start taking a look. So I wish you well and thanks for stopping by.